Hello everybody, Konadra here. Welcome back to Automation, the car company tycoon game. And I am excited to continue on the Vector Automotive Challenge. For one reason being, you can see there's two new cars here. One we know the name of and one that looks pretty new, doesn't it? And I'm also excited because at the end of this episode we will be announcing the second fan build competition. This time things are going to be a little bit different. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more complicated for me because the car files are all weird now. But beyond that, we're actually going for something this time. There's something at stake. So stay tuned to the end of the episode for that. But first off, I said last time we were going to separate out the Radian and the Kaysen and make it so that the Radian was kind of the entry level car, uh, your normal family sedan and the Kaysen would be the larger, more estate-like, luxury sedan or wagon. I think for 2006 we are just going to make ourselves a wagon and what have I have, what I've done is actually gone and made the body already because, well, I usually just fast forward through it anyway I have a lot to cover today so we are just going to build out the car and you will see what it looks like now. I am personally pretty happy with the styling of this guy. Oh, it didn't save my color. Hey, get a color job. That's better. So yeah, I am fairly happy with the styling of this car. It is staying in line with the new sleek kind of lineup that we have going right now. Uh, again, pretty happy with the back. I've been pretty successful with the uh, the clean sleek lines on the wagons maybe a little too clean this time uh, almost a little boring but then we got this cool splitter going on at the bottom and some vents so that uh, makes up for it and I think once we fill these obnoxious wheel wells with something it will uh, it will kind of be a little bit more visually appealing from there in the front we have a return of the vents under the headlights we have the same style headlights as the last generation casing which is cool uh, it's nice to finally have some continuity between generations. And our familiar front end with a kind of connecting center grille. This is the part that I spend a lot of time on trying to get it to be right and look smooth. Uh, there's, um, there's two different ways you can spend a lot of time on cars. Uh, people will put a ton of fixtures on it and do super fine details. That's one way to spend a lot of time. I spend a lot of time being indecisive and being um, very realistic minded so I'm really focusing on making it look like something that would be on the production floor and not look gaudy or you know kind of unusual uh, so that's where I spend a lot of my time and I think this car does pretty well with that I would love for this chrome uh, to maybe not be there, but uh, I ended up not putting any chrome in the front, which I probably should have. But that's what we got. It is what it is. So, this guy is probably obviously going to be using our new Generation 2 V8. And if we just choose that right out of the box, you'll notice I chose all-wheel drive, uh, which is a pretty, uh, pretty big thing for a large car like this. And that is because I do want this to be almost in the category of extreme performance. So, if we remember correctly, this engine made 488 horsepower and 363 foot-pounds of torque. That is actually not more than I was aiming for. Um, previously, in the last generation case, and we were looking to get about 241 horsepower. The car was much smaller and uh, it was also kind of still in the same category as the Radian. This time, not so much. And I do want to go over with you kind of my, my ideas, my uh, inspiration for these cars, because that's going to be important in the upcoming uh, fan build competition. So, uh, let's see, this one runs on regular fuel, I believe. No, it's running on premium. Uh, let's see, 488 horsepower is nice, it's plenty for the Vextron, but with all-wheel drive and a good bit of weight to push around, I think we should maybe aim for the 500 mark. 
we really want to make a statement with this guy, and it won't be hard. Uh, let me actually copy this real quick. And this is going to be, uh, let's see, hopefully everything saves and transfers well. And this will be the NA uh, high performance. Not that it wasn't already high performance to begin with. I'm just going to take it and go even further with it. I think we did choose VVL. Let me look. Okay, we did. So we have that going for us already. Uh, we do have the VVL profile on there. We did not put VVT on it. Gains us a nice bit of bottom end, which is good for a big heavy car like this. So I'm willing to spend that money there. And I believe with our fuel octane at 87.5, we can actually throw some more compression at this guy. Uh, which is a quick and easy way to gain horsepower. So let's keep going there until... Ding, ding. Knock. So up to 495 just off of that. We also have just a little bit left in this cam profile. There we go. 501. And I think our economy is still similar. It's actually slightly better. Uh, and it might even be a little bit better with the uh, more impressive looking bottom end kind of uh, torque curve. It's still very high strong. And that is intentional, so you could use this car. Oh, Mom can take this car out and and uh, go get her groceries and not be all over the road, as long as she's sensible and keeps it under the you know four to five thousand RPM limit. Uh, and Dad can go out and go to eight grand and piss off the neighbors. That's the kind of car I want to build. <laughs> Material cost on this engine is now very high at twenty seven twenty seven. Something to keep in mind. So if we go to the trim, we are going to go for the sequential gearbox here. I don't think this is the kind of car you would want a regular manual like gearbox in, and I don't think that's the kind of market we're in here. Uh, the sequential though, it's a nice middle ground. You'll have the ability to shift on your own, or, you know, the comfort of being able to just drive it. We'll have to adjust this later, and... This is going to be a pricey car already, uh, so let's just stick with the viscous for now, and we'll see what we can do later. Let's bring the weight or the power distribution down to 48 is a good starting point. We're gonna go for medium compound. So let's finally put some wheels on this guy, huh? I think probably. Actually, the thin spoked fives aren't bad uh, once we get them to fill out these fenders. They're going to be quite large. Yeah, 255s. That's not too bad. I've got more. There's more left in it. So, 265. And then a little bit of offset to bring them out. Not bad, not bad. Alright, and we'll do alloys. Continuing on. Vented discs is the heavier car, so let's go for some two pistons up front. Maybe a 300 millimeter uh, maybe even a little bit larger, 300 milliliter, 350 milliliter, milliliter, millimeter. We're not in chemistry class. And uh, an appropriate size for the back. Let's keep them in the towards the comfort side. We're not looking for necessarily road track, you know, kind of performance. More just the straight line kind of performance. Mm, we'll do we'll do fully clad. Keep the downforce out of this don't think I have a spoiler or anything in the back, so would not get any help there. This engine doesn't require an obnoxious amount of cooling, so that's nice. So we'll put 275, we'll do five seats, and there will be plenty of room in the back for those five seats, so we should have a nice comfort rating on this guy. That's one of the things I really would like to see. We'll do premium interior. And I think as the base model, uh, I would like it to at least have, at least have a like um, regular kind of good stereo system. Uh, navigation is probably something you'd have to step up to. Power steering, ABS, traction control. Is it necessary? I don't know. We'll find out later. Uh, we'll stick with our standard safety as well. In the spring department. 
we have a lot of options here. Uh, now these <laughs> these hyper or, or sorry hyper I always want to say hyper hydro pneumatic ones are extremely nice. They're also extremely expensive. So let's just stick with the progressives for now. Gas monotubes. And this is something I want to look into as well. See if it's worth it. It doesn't cost a whole lot. So we'll start with passive. And we'll move up from there. And we'll leave that right height up a little bit. Okay. So our drivability is at 55. Sportiness is at 44.1. That's pretty darn good. Uh, comfort's at 39. Let's try and get that above 40. Uh, prestige is at 32. That's pretty nice. Economy is pretty terrible. We still do need to adjust the gearing. Weight is as high as I expected at 4,000 pounds. That's why I said this thing needed some, some grunt, some muscle. Uh, cost, this is the most expensive car we've ever produced. $15,210 so far just to produce it. So definitely going to be a high price tag. 0 to 60 is currently sitting at 4.2 with a top speed of 175. Let's now go into the gearing. This should help our economy out significantly. Let's see where the happy medium is. We're under 17.3, 17.4, 17.6. So that's pretty good there. Wheel spins at 11.6. Not a huge improvement going to the geared, as I kind of expected with all wheel drive. Uh, giving it more rear bias helps out with the wheel spin. So let's do that. This car must be a little bit weird with the weight distribution. Okay, there seems to be the happy medium. Uh, we got prestige up at 31.5 and the drivability up at 55.3. Sportiness is staying the same, but our 0 to 60 just continues to go down, which is nice. I like it. Tire wise, are we actually too wide? What does that do for. Eh, yeah, now we're getting back into wheel spins, so let's not do that. Uh, what we do have here is oversteer. That's not very good. Sports compounds would increase our uh, braking efficiency and our sportiness. Not worth it, I don't think. Let's just try and deal with this oversteer first. Let's go to suspension. I would rather not have to go to staggered. Uh, but that's an easy fix. That would be an easy fix. Uh, that automatically gives us the the nice kind of oversteery, but then slight into understeer. So that's a good start already. Uh, let's go back to the square setup and how close is it? It's very close, huh? Interesting. So that gives us 56 and 44. So let's go back to 1. Let's go back to 275. That gives us 58 and 42. 42. Let me remember this. 58, 42. Because I have forgotten. 58, 42. 58, 42. 56, 44. This is, this is better. This is a nice nicer middle ground between the two. We don't lose as much sportiness, uh, but we do indeed gain in drivability. So that's good there. Comfort, I said I wanted to get that to be closer to the 40 mark. And if we get rid of that bottoming out completely, it does indeed help. It's probably in here that we're losing out on uh, comfort. Drivability increase. Yeah, let's do that, because that doesn't actually add too terribly much in cost. Okay, with 500 horsepower, I think that's a, that's a reasonable claim. Okay, that would get us up to the 40 mark on the Comfort. Uh, it did indeed increase our price, probably lowered our fuel mileage due to the, the weight and whatnot. Um... I need to mess with these. The next car I build, I'm going to mess with these. Uh, uh, it, was a, it was a suggestion on the last episode, and it's something I've not done. But I'm pretty sure if I hit hold and make changes, I can then revert back if needed. Uh, it's much easier to compare. Uh, it's probably easier for you guys to see, too. So, we'll do that. 
Okay, so now we're 57, 4, 43, 40, 32, and 55. Pretty darn good numbers there. Uh, that economy hurts my feelings a little bit. But this is a expensive 500 horsepower car. Probably going to be expected to get 17.7 miles per gallon. Let's be real. Not really much I can do about it either. I mean, I can help it with even more overdrive. Ooh. Ooh. Interesting. That just, that just brought it up to like 19. Hmm. Well, that sounds better. And it didn't kill the sport. It certainly didn't help it, but it didn't kill it. Um. Hmm. I'm sure this drivability would be above 60 if we went with a full automatic, but nah. You know what? I think... I think I'm going to be okay with this. So here we go with our premium estate sedan. Probably the most expensive car we will sell. Uh, maybe there's room for a cheaper model with this same body in the future. But as of right now, I think this is the one we're going to try and sell. And just a quick overview of the um, performance once again. We got a 12 6 quarter mile. 122 and a 117 on the skid pad is pretty good for especially medium compound. And 171 mile per hour top speed, 4.50 to 60. Those are Vextron esque numbers out of a huge family sedan slash wagon. So cool. Let me look through this. Uh, drivability is hurt by the footprint because it's huge. Sportiness is hurt by the gearbox and. Eh, just minuscule stuff otherwise. Uh, the driver height, the, the car is sitting pretty high. And let's see. Comfort is anything necessarily. Ah, responsiveness. Interesting. So, um, I mentioned before that the responsiveness was going to be pretty low. I'm glad we did increase that bottom end on the engine. Uh, because this is such a top heavy kind of engine, so that's, that's okay. Negative 2.7 is not the end of the world. 23, 33.55 dollars per year for service costs. Again, pretty high, but to be expected. Okay, that's enough time with this guy. We got another car to build, and I've probably already spent way more time than I anticipated. So, on to the next one. Alright, are you ready for this one? Because it's going to be weird. I'm warning you. Going a little bit outside of the box here. The Ark is going to be our first hot hatch. This is a car that I've been wanting to build for Vector for quite a while now, uh, but I haven't really found a good platform. I haven't found a good idea to make a unique product. Well, thanks to the mod pack and some random clicking on my part, there's going to be a unique element to this car. That is for sure. Uh, as far as the styling goes, Boy, this body's a struggle. <laughs> I've done quite a few cars on this body in the past, and honestly, it still looks a little bit too... Prius-y. Uh, this, this bizarre big front window, I'm never 100% happy with it. The back looks cool. Uh, finally found our creative use for these taillights. Yeah, there's this going on. Just, just ignore that. Um, I like the big front door and the tiny little back door for... Uh, kind of proving the point that this is actually a two-seater car for all intents and purposes. So this is what we have. So what's going to make this car unique? You would think there would be just a little front engine, you know, front wheel drive, uh, kind of drivetrain going on here. But no, we're going weird. This is a mid-engine car. And it's going to be a mid-engine all-wheel drive car. Yep, that's pretty weird. And that's why there's this random bit of chassis sticking out of the back. Shh. So if that seems like a stretch of the imagination to you, just imagine it this way. Here is the underpinning chassis of the car, and compare it to where the door is. So basically, the back passengers are going to have their feet down here, and they're going to be sitting kind of over the engine bay. This is a transverse engine, so hopefully they will have some room back there. And uh, we can push the front seats up even further. And the front firewall up further. Because there will be nothing up here. This car's got just 
big front heavy windshield anyway uh, so we can't imagine that the front seat kind of stops right here and you got some leg room for the back so in the back you have kind of a high seat but uh, let's be honest it's not there for any real reason uh, it would probably fold flat and just be for storage this is kind of kind of be our answer to not just the hot hatch but almost the small sports car like the Miata type of sports car in a more practical kind of format. Let's see what we can do with this guy. Uh, we have some engines. I'm not sure that any of them are going to fit. We're gonna try first the NA version of the AC2. Let's see what happens. Uh, it is too wide, as I kind of expected. But let's see what we can do. I know we left some, some room here. So I'm just going to shrink it down all the way and let's go back to the screen. Still too wide. It is still too wide. So it's going to have to be... Hmm. It might have to be a completely new engine. Let me see what I can do. Alright, so it looks like a bore of 76.6 is as wide as will fit back there. Pretty much what I expected. So we're going to make a EC mini engine family. And let's see, let's go for dual red cam. That's probably going to make us shrink it again. All right, there we go. And aluminum, we'll do VVL. I'm going to guess that we probably won't be fitting any turbos back here either. Uh, so let's see what we can do with 1.5 liters as far as high performance goes. Uh, we'll go for cast iron because we're not going to need uh, high torque, that's for sure. Who has the highest RPM here? I beam steel. Who has the highest RPM here? Forge tends to high low friction or yeah, low friction cast, you know, that's that's a Cooper thing. We'll stay away from those. Lightweight forged uh, would get us that super high revving, but let's just go for forged for now. We're gonna keep that in compression super high. Uh, we'll probably have a pretty high normal cam profile and a super high secondary. We'll do VVT. Not going with the mentality that this needs to be a cheap car. Uh, that just needs to be kind of high performance, cheaper than the Vectron, and small. Because not everybody wants a big Vectron. Some people just want a little get around town, easy to drive kind of car. Alrighty, here we have it. The miniature EC. 1.5 liters. Producing, if it'll ever go back to the other screen, 165 horsepower, 119 foot pounds of torque. It weighs under 200 pounds. It has a 22.34% economy rating, uh, which is not the best we've ever produced, but it's not the worst in the world. It is okay in the smoothness. It is rather long stroked due to the uh, engine bay restrictions we had. There is the ability to run this turbocharged in the future. It will fit. Uh, but for now, let's go for this pretty cool looking individual throttle body DFI setup. Now let's see what kind of performance this car has uh, with this engine. This is the NA variant. And let's go to trim. Let's go for manual, six speed, top speed, yeah, it's probably going to be somewhere around, probably 150 would be my guess, so we're going to need some overdrive, figure it out as we go, we'll do the, the viscous LSD, this we're going to have to figure out as we go, sports compounds, let's go up to 60 and see how that looks. There's not a ton of room for tires in this car, which is going to be another thing that plays a big factor in you guys' builds. So, continuing on to aluminum, let's continue right through. Try and do this somewhat quickly. Not as much room as usual for our brakes. But we'll keep it in the, uh, the same normal ballpark. We're going to have probably either like size rotors or larger rears depending on what we need 
I'll do fully clad as per usual. And cooling your flow uh, required is only 82. So that's going to help the economy rating quite a bit. Alright, let's leave it up there a little bit because this does have some reliability issues. Uh, seating four at max. Four is being gracious. And we'll do a standard interior. We'll do just a basic CD setup, power steering, and ABS, and that is it. Try to keep this car light. We'll do progressive springs, gas motor tubes, passive. Oh, I forgot to mess with the semi active sway bars. Eh, another day, another day. I'll default to sport for now. Okay, it's it's not as bad as I initially kind of feared it would be. 48 and 41, those are decent numbers. Comfort's pretty low at 25. Expected that too. Uh, prestige is low and safety is normal. 31.2 miles per gallon, that's okay. Let's do some tuning. A little bit of overdrive would be advantageous. Let's see. Wheel spin, lots of it. Which way do we need to go? Probably more to the rear. Because of the weight on the rear axle. Yeah, that's helping. Helping out a lot, actually. Almost getting rid of it. So we're barely going to be spinning up those front tires. Uh, they're just there to kind of keep us planted. So now we're up to 51.2 and a 41.6. That's not bad at all. And our arrow, I think, was okay. Don't think we need any downforce. Tire-wise, handling-wise... I was worried about this, the snap oversteer, as you will, the uh, it's understeer the whole time, and now we're dead kind of oversteer. Okay, so we're definitely going to be able to improve our drivability. Let's see, narrower front tires, for sure. Helping hasn't solved, I think 225 is the max, so that's all we got. Suspension wise, I'm going to need some help here. Going to need lots of help. All right, here we go. Got it to be understeery, but it's really a lot of fun to drive. It looks like uh, the sportiness is at 0.99. Uh, the sportiness over here is at 45.9, which could be higher, but I think that's probably a power issue, not really a handling issue. 56.7 on the drivability. I'm curious what this thing is costing at the moment. Bingo, under 10,000. That is what I wanted. Uh, sorry if that clap was loud. I'll probably have to edit that out. <laughs> um, Yes, yes, this is what I wanted. I am already very, very happy. 6.2, 0 to 60, that's kind of in the ballpark of what I wanted. Alright, so I'm editing the video, and what do I notice? But a classic Konadra mistake. Let's go back into here real quick. Revise. Some of you probably already noticed. I didn't notice till it was far too late. We can fix it now. Two valves per cylinder. What are you thinking, Gone Dodger? What are you doing with your life? Let's try four on for silence. Let's first see. We're at 165, 119, and 22%. Let's see what just going up to four does. 181, 126, and 23%. Fantastic. Well, this should improve things, huh? Continuing on to here. Uh, we picked up almost... Uh, Almost a full two miles per gallon. Sportiness came up a ton. Uh, drivability fell a little bit because we got quite a bit more power now. I have to take a look at that wheel speed or wheel spin real quick. Let me look. And eight percent. I don't know. Oh, and we're oversteering again. Fantastic. All right. A little bit more camber in the back, and that should be nipped in the bud. So now we're at fifty-five to forty-six. Well, uh, forty-six four even sportier because you can actually drive it cool cool now about the wheel spin don't think there's much I can do there uh, that reduced to 64 okay so this is this is the happy point right here okay all good let's take a look at the specs now we are at test track 5.90 to 60 so we're under the six uh, 151 miles per hour. Didn't adjust the gearing, so I thought we get even more. Nope, it's happy right here. Just kidding. 
Uh, back to here, 151.5 miles per hour. That never happened. And 14.1 uh, quarter mile. Great. 1.22, 1.15. Still extremely happy with this car. I The styling, meh. I can take it or leave it. I, I tried a lot of options, trust me. Uh, it's just just a real difficult car to design. Love the back. The back is, is really cool. Overall, the whole car's, you know, kind of feel is cool, so I think it kind of makes up for the little bit of lackluster styling. It's certainly going to be a sleeper. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of the Fiat 500, except it's got the engine in a cooler place. All right. Well, I think that finally wraps up the 2006 Vector lineup. So, time to announce the competition. We're doing things quite a bit differently this time. Uh, instead of having you guys create competitors for Vector, I'm going to have you create mods for Vector. So, basically, think of yourselves as a tuning firm. Uh, think of yourselves like a, a, a Hennessy a dine-in, uh, even think of, you know, people that just make performance packages for cars, like a, uh, a Turner BMW, something like that. Uh, so, here's what you're going to do. You're going to take one of these four cars, any one you like, and you're going to make your own trim off of it. So, let's say I go to revise car here. Uh, I'm going to have all four files available for each car. I will have a separate video showing you how to do that if you're not familiar or comfortable with it. Uh, see the link that will probably pop up somewhere around now for that. Um, but you'll take yourself this slider right here, or this drop down, and make yourself a new trim. And then anything you want to do with that, you can. Uh, bonus points if you use one of these engines and then make a new variant of it. Uh, I will be more impressed and more likely to choose uh, your submission if you do that because to me that's that's more in line with the spirit of the competition. Uh, so we're gonna send you a chassis with an engine in it and you guys are going to be the ones that that make that into something that we don't already offer. It doesn't have to be necessarily high performance. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, try and do something unique, something that's going to catch my eye or catch my attention and make me want to sign a contract with you and say, hey, here you go, take take my chassis and engine and do something else with it that will appeal to even more customers, uh, will get more people interested in Vector, but then, uh, you know, you can sell it and you can make some money off of it. That's the idea here. So that's your limitation. Uh, last time I was having you build your own car, so it's certainly going to be uh, much more limited in what you can do, but I'm very interested to see how you guys kind of be unique. Because if I get a ton of the same submissions, uh, odds are I'm probably not going to be picking one of yours, or it's going to be very difficult for yours to be the one to get picked, because I'm just going to pick the, the best. Say if everybody just makes a super high performance one, I'm just going to pick the best super high performance one. Uh, versus if you do something crazy or something that I wouldn't think of that we would find marketable, yeah, you have a better shot of being picked. So this time around, there will be a prize, and that is a automation t-shirt. I'll show that on the screen now, too. And that is the shirt you would have seen in the smoking tire videos and stuff like that. And that is provided by the automation devs themselves. Well, Taffy specifically. Uh, so thank you to them for doing that. And uh, it's going to be at random. So everybody that submits has an equal shot of getting a t-shirt. So it's not going to be up to me choosing who gets the shirt, basically. Because uh, I don't think that would be fair. And I don't want it to be necessarily the straw poll of, you know, who has the best car there. Uh, so it's just going to be random. Anybody that enters has a shot at getting the shirt. Uh, and once again, thank you to the automation guys for that. All four files will be available in the description. If you are already comfortable and how to install them and whatnot, then get to work. If not, check out the other video. I'll walk you through how to do it and how to send them back to me. All right. Please, when you send the files back to me in your email, say which is which. So uh, obviously I'm gonna know the models. They're all gonna be the same. 
Uh, I'm still going to have you send me the model just in case. But uh, when you do your trim, say, okay, the trim is CDR, the engine is EC2, and the variant is HRNA. That way I can easily install them. All right, I think that's it. That's as, that's as short as I could summarize this. Really excited to see what you guys do. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments or on Twitter, something like that, and I'll be more than happy to answer them. But thanks as always for watching. I hope you're excited for the new competition, and I will see you and your submissions next time.